Outside of time spent with you guys. Yeah. Um, I like the Garmin watch. Yeah, it got, it's a Garmin watch, right? Yep. Yeah, it's like a Garmin watch and it does everything like a Fitbit does except it's like waterproof. I can't figure it out. There's too many screens. <laughs> there, I think there are some videos like on the website to show you. I'm going to need that. Hook it up to music. You need to hire somebody. Yeah. I think, um, well, I got a lot of presents that I thought were really cool, including my Yeti air fryer that came about a month before Christmas straight to the door and I opened the door and I was like, oh, my Christmas present arrived. <laughs> he was not thrilled about that fact, but um, that was a really good one. We've been cooking some food in there. Hi, Jason. And um, I think what, what surprised both of us, because we had a lot of really cool presents this year, I think what surprised both of us that we really, really liked is a weighted blanket. Oh, yeah. That thing's amazing. That thing is like... I just got tired thinking about it. I know. You get in and it's like a cocoon. And you never want to get out of bed. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, and it helps you sleep. Like I've slept like a rock. So I have a couple things that help me sleep. Cooling the house down to like 66 to 68 degrees at night. Trying to get it as dark as possible. Having blue light blocking glasses. And now this weighted blanket is just like, like the cherry on top. It's like amazing. It's pretty amazing. Oh, it's pretty awesome. You guys should totally try. It is a little bit of an investment. They are kind of pricey, but oh my gosh. Gift worthy, totally great idea. Mm -hmm. Anyone you give it to will love. Just make sure. What brand did you get? Do you, do you remember? I can't remember. We'll have to share that. One with weights in it. Yeah. So, um, all right. So I want to share a little bit of my year in review very quickly because there's a lot that happened in 2018, and it's funny because I probably you do this too. You look back and you think, oh my gosh, did that all happen in one year? I don't know if any of you guys watched my year in review video that I made last week, but um, there were definitely ups and there were definitely downs. I had several downs. Um, <laughs> I had two programs. Well, I had three, three programs that I launched in three separate programs I launched in 2018. One that I ran twice that was very successful and two others that were complete duds. And like literally for one of them, two people signed up and for someone else, one person signed up. But, um, you know, I also learned a lot. I worked with a lot of one-on-one -on -one clients. I did have the um, Get Gutsy program, which was an eight-week program that was very successful. Ran it twice, saw lots of great results with my clients. Worked with a lot of different um, individuals one-on-one. -on -one. Did functional lab testing with them. Got to the underlying causes of, you know, their fatigue and um, their digestive struggles and autoimmune conditions and all these sorts of things. So it was a really, really cool year. And I'm really excited for 2019 because it kind of reorganized everything. We're going to talk a little bit about that today, but um, I kind of wanted to share. There was, um, you know, we started the podcast, which is pretty cool. If you guys don't follow the podcast, it's the Tiny Fit Diva podcast. You can get it on Android, you can get it on iTunes, whatever app you have. But that was really cool. I didn't know how to do a podcast. I was just like, hey, honey, I want to do a podcast. And he was like, okay, do it. And uh, he was on the first several and periodically makes guest appearances. And so that was really fun. But I interview experts across the country, doctors, naturopaths, um, chiropractors, all fitness uh, you know, experts, all sorts of different people. I'm not just the only one talking. I interview a ton of people. And it's been really cool. I've met a lot of really cool people this way. We've talked about a lot of really cool things. I love hearing when um, someone, you know, lets me know 
that an episode made an impact for them because then I know that I'm I'm not just recording myself back. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So that's kind of 2018 and in 2019 we have some really exciting things coming up but I'm going to show that at the end. Right now we're going to get to resolutions. So the title of this is Stop Making Resolutions and Live Your Life because my normal phrase is stop dieting and live your life. So I thought that was a good little segue. So Patrick and I were talking yesterday and I said, hey, I want to do like a video or a podcast or something on resolutions because I basically think they're stupid. I do too. <laughs> and, um, but everybody makes them. But I think, I feel like a lot of people maybe in their early 20s make them and maybe midlife, but I think there's like this point a lot of times that people come to where they're like, resolutions are dumb. I don't want to make them anymore. And, you know, I never follow through on them. So I wanted to talk about a better way to get things done in your life. So um, in my mind, you should not ever make a January 1st resolution um, pretty much ever again. So the things that we might be talking about doing in 2019, those aren't resolutions. I'm going to re return it, basically. You shouldn't make a resolution. You should make a goal because goals have plans behind them. So the first thing I wanted to say about resolutions versus... Oh, a goal without a plan is a wish. Yeah. I heard that one about. That's, that's good. Um, that's a good addition. Thank you. <laughs> oh. That sparked something way back. Way, way, way back in this file in my brain. Okay. So one, don't set resolutions. And why? Why? Because resolutions, like, they never go anywhere. If you set a goal, you have to have a plan to follow up that goal. So if you're in business, and you have a plan for the first quarter, you reverse engineer that and say, well, what steps do I need to take to achieve that plan? For whatever reason, we don't always do that with resolutions. We're like, I wanna lose 30 pounds and I'm just gonna eat better on January 1st. And then you wake up January 1st with a little bit of motivation and you just sort of assume that you know what to do, but you don't actually have a plan. You didn't meal plan, you didn't meal prep, you didn't like, you know, do any of these things. You didn't research. You didn't know. research. Yeah. Um, and you know, some people do, but, because of the other things that we'll talk about um, in a minute here, those resolutions end up falling through. 70% of people that make resolutions in the new year fail within about, I can't remember, how many of those related to? Do we need to take a moment? Yeah, give me a second. Okay, 70% um, of the people that set New Year's resolutions fail. And it's like within the first one or two months. And you see that if you go to the gym, right? January is packed. And by February and March, it's empty again. Well, you know what's funny with that? I was at the gym today. It's a Saturday morning. I went at 9 o'clock, right? Planet Fitness. Great equipment. So people are probably setting their new... And if I'm stealing your thunder, I apologize. But people are probably setting their January 1st resolutions. There's all kinds of equipment available right now. Saturday morning would have been the perfect time. There's no sports activities going on. Nothing like that. Get to the gym. Yeah. Start, start now. Yeah, there's literally no reason. Okay. You okay? No, but, but that's, I mean, that brings us to the point too, which is take action. So mm -hmm. number one, don't make a resolution, make a goal. And then reverse engineer that with like what you need to do to achieve that goal. And then secondly, take action. Don't wait, and this is so stupid. Don't wait till January 1st. Don't wait until Monday. I think, I was thinking about this, I think Monday came around because people usually like grocery shop on the weekends and they um, meal prep on the weekends and stuff like that. But it doesn't, you know, in my mind, the longer you wait, the less successful you'll be. So you have motivation today, take action today. Throw think, stuff out of your pantry. Get rid of it. I think some of that stuff has been enforced by two things. Um, or one thing. It's a mindset of school. As we're growing up, you're like, oh my gosh, i got to go back to school. So before I go back to school, I'm going to make sure I relax and I rest. Or if you're a chronic prison inmate and you have to go back to prison or whatever like that. But everything else is like... Hi, Ralph. Everything else is uh, like things that are going to make you better, so why would you wait? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're going to start a running program, don't wait till the first. Get your butt up off the couch. Well, and, and, so, and so much of this goes into mentality, too, of like what you said, it's good for you. Why are you going to wait? Yeah. People view exercise, people view nutrition as punishment as opposed to a um, reward for being alive. Like, how about you value your life enough and you value your body enough and you respect respect yourself enough that you give yourself good things for yourself as opposed to like I, I made a post the other day it was about two different kinds of candies one was M&M's and one was basically a, a healthy version of M&M's neither one was healthy 
but one of them was clearly bad. It was worse. The M&Ms have... They're not healthy? No. The other ones? Yeah. No, they're still a crap ton of sugar. It's not like, huh. hey, this is a good good choice. Have I thought it was a meal replacement candy. Oh, be quiet. Okay, mentality that we need to work on right here. <laughs> but I made a post about that the other day, and, and so the M&Ms are filled with all this fake stuff. Fake stuff. And so we have this mentality that it's like, if I change my diet, then, um, you know, I have to give up anything that tastes good. No, you just have to stop putting stuff in your body that's known to cause hyperactivity and brain fog and blood sugar spikes and weight gain and, and mood death. issues and death and diabetes and heart <laughs> disease and all these things. There are quote unquote healthy alternatives. But there's this mentality of punishment, like, oh, and deprivation, like, oh, I just can't have this ever again, or, oh, I have to wait until Monday and binge on all the garbage and then start on Monday, and it's going to be, by the way, people have that mentality, I'm going to clear my house of the junk, or I'm going to binge on everything, or I'm going to have a last meal. You make the start of your detox, your program, your diet, or whatever it is, way worse, way harder, because what are you going to do? You're going to go through way worse detoxification from sugar and caffeine and processed foods and food dyes and all this kind of stuff. If you like, like, it's like carb loading for a marathon run. If you're like uploading all these things the weekend prior to making a change. So, um, so one is don't set resolutions, set goals and reverse engineer them. Mm -hmm. Two, take action. Don't wait until Monday or January 1st or whatever. Just do it. I remember when we um, decided to go gluten free, I, there was no last meal. There was no last meal. Because I was like, this is either going to help me I feel actually, better. I actually put an entire French loaf under the, under the bed and I ate it. You faked it? Like yeah, six secret yeah, yeah. I was basically like, this is either going to help me feel mm -hmm. better and then I want to keep doing it, or I can go back to the way it was. Yeah. So there is no, like, and that's the mentality you should have. Anytime you're doing like a goal or, you know, or changing your life, whether it's business or food or, or exercise or whatever, just do it. And then decide, like, I'm doing this because I respect myself and I want to make myself feel better. And if this helps me feel better, awesome. Then I'll have the motivation. I'll feel better. I'll have more energy. I'll be in the right mentality to keep it going. But if I don't feel better, then who? you can always go back. You can go back to eating the bread. You can go back to sitting on the couch. You can go back to eating the Oreos or whatever it is. If you don't see the results that you want, you don't feel better. But just start taking the action that you know is going to make you feel better. Because when you feel better, you're automatically going to have the motivation to keep going. Right. So, the third one, and this is one that I think a lot of people miss, and this is one of the reasons that resolutions fail so miserably, is get accountability. So, if you are making any sort of change to your nutrition, to your exercise, business goals, whatever it is, you have to have somebody that keeps you accountable. Whether it's somebody that makes fun of you all the time, or um, <laughs> or it's your best friend, or it's a workout buddy, or it's somebody that you text every week, or you join, like um, you know, like I said, I run these online programs and I have my free Facebook group, Stop Dieting and Live Your Life. If you join a group like that so that you're able to post and say, hey, I'm really craving blah, can you give me a substitute? Or I'm really struggling with this, do you have any ideas? Or I, or celebrate your wins. I did great today. I just wanted to share that. I'm super proud of myself. And there's nothing wrong with that. And so accountability groups really help. And accountability, lack of accountability is where people fail. And so if you're just like, I'm magically going to lose 30 pounds and I'm going to wait until January 1st and I'm not going to plan for it and I'm not going to have any accountability, you're going to wake up and you're going to be, first of all, super overwhelmed January 1st because you don't know what you're doing. And then January 3rd, you're going to be tired because you picked a super hard, extremely restrictive diet. You feel horrible. You have withdrawal headaches. You feel miserable. You're hungry. And you quit on the bed. I think, you know, really, really with that is that positive side. You don't want to live with a drill sergeant, you know what I mean? Some of you may live with a drill sergeant, and good for you. But you know, you, you want somebody who, who can encourage you, or if you set up a reward, if you make it through, you know, if you get up five days and you work out and you've got a reward at the end of the week, even if it might be a cheat or something, but it's something that motivates you to get there. Okay, let's talk about treat, don't cheat for a second. Okay. So those candies that I posted about, uh -huh. the M&Ms versus the M&Ms, yeah, yeah. that's a treat, don't cheat. So you're not, you're choosing a healthier version. So I always say you can eat what you want when you want as long as it's made with the right ingredients. 
That's the concept of treat, don't cheat. So treat yourself for sure. Have some paleo mug cake, have um, some dairy-free ice cream, have some homemade fudge, have some um, better M&Ms. By the way, the brand is Little Secrets and they were, they tasted legitimately like M&Ms, but they didn't have like the, the fake ingredients, the food colors that mess your mess with your brain and all this kind of stuff. It's like natural food dye. So there are other options. And again, this comes to decision making. So a lot of times what I see when I talk to my clients or I observe people trying to go through these things, constant excuses, constant excuses. And all I have to say to that is if it's important to you, you make it happen. I have had clients that have chosen to work with me one-on-one -on -one, that cannot afford my services, that figure out how to make it happen, and they see life change. I've seen other people that can definitely afford my services tell me that they cannot afford my services and their lives never change. And it's a common pattern because you have you make excuses. Mm -hmm. And if it's important to me, I'll figure out how to um, be consistent. I mean, if smoking is important to you, you figure out how to how to pay for that next pack of cigarettes. Right. If um, you know having chips in your house is important to you, you figure out how to afford that. But as soon as we talk about you know two bunches of kale for ninety nine cents, that's too expensive or you know a bag of lemons or a little bit of grass-fed meat but that's okay i can afford the five dollar half gallon of ice cream as opposed to the five or six dollars it takes for the pound of ground beef that's like three different meals so whenever somebody and, and look i'm not i'm not trying to be insensitive to budgets here because um there there is a balance but there but my point is there are ways to make it happen and if you're determined to make it happen, you'll find a way. So people that really need to be on a tight budget, there are so many places like Costco and Sam's and all of these where you can, you can buy in bulk or you can buy organic, but it's discounted. Or you can go buy Dirty 30 rules so that, or sorry, um, <laughs> Dirty Dozen, Clean 15, Dirty Dozen, so that you know what to buy organic and what not, so where, where you can save money. So there's so many different options. But if you go into it with this mentality of I'm going to fail, I'm not worth the effort. I've never succeeded in the past. I don't know what it's like to be healthy and, and healthy food is too expensive, then you will fail because you've already set up five different excuses in your mind about why you can't do it. Right. If on the other hand you say, I've hit my limit, I'm tired of living this way, I know that health is available to me, I know that I can achieve whatever I actually set my mind to, I'm choosing to tell myself in positive, terms, I will, I can, I am, and then you set out to take action, you reverse engineer that plan, and you find out, post online, and ask people for suggestions. How do you do budgetary things? Someone's going to post underneath there and say, you know, buy from this place and then make a bunch of crock pot meals that turn into like six different meals, but that meal costs like eight dollars. You know, there's so many different options out there, but you have to be your own advocate. You have to be willing to, um, to make a decision and not an excuse. So stop making resolutions, make goals, take action on them, and get accountability. And that accountability partner is gonna be the one that says, here's an idea for you to make it happen. Or you set this plan in January, it's now January 21st, and I know that you're struggling a little bit, let's figure out how we can help each other succeed. Yep. I think sometimes too on a uh, uh, having a end state goal, like if you want to get back into a workout program, putting something out there to get ready for. So for example, um, OhioRuns.com. Hey Abigail. Hey Jeff. OhioRuns.com. What's up, Pat? Hi Jeff. <laughs> um, if you want to, if you want to do a. Uh, uh, you want to get a workout program, sign yourself up for a 5K or a 10K in March. And then you know it's have coming. Something to push toward. Yeah, have something to push forward, you know, towards. So because that'll help with your diet, it'll help with all that. Yeah, stuff. you know, like with Beach Body. And then you can celebrate after you finish it too. It's a really cool thing. With Beach Body, it's so funny because by the way, we do a lot of at home workouts through Beach Body on mm -hmm. demand. We love their workouts. I've done them for like three years now. They're awesome. But what's so funny about Beach Body is they have two things, well, three things really well done. One, the workouts are fantastic. Two, they encourage accountability through online support groups. So you get in a group, you post that you did your workout that day, you get encouragement, depending on who's running the group. If you get so many points, you might get a prize at the end, stuff like that, so accountability. And um, 
30, they have like this, it's amazing how getting a t-shirt will motivate people. But if you complete a program and you take like a before and after picture, they'll mail you a t-shirt for, for graduating from this program. So, I mean, that really, you would think a t-shirt wouldn't do that much to, to force you to go through. I didn't like my t-shirt. Well, that one kind of stunk, but I've gotten a bunch of t-shirts. <laughs> it was really before. hard too. I know. Um, that, but you chose that one instead of like a generic one. And the Body Beast one was like this muscle t-shirt to make him look like a douchebag. But it was like... Um, <laughs> More so than I normally am. Yeah. yeah. But, um, uh, but my point is, something as small as that is shockingly motivating to people to finish three weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, of whatever goal it is. So set that goal for you or get your accountability partner to have a secret gift for you if that's more motivating. Be like, here, here's the budget, um, but I want you to come up with something to reward me for this and then help me stay on track. Yeah. So again, but this should be happening throughout the year. This should not be something that just happens in January. This should be something that's like, these are the goals I want for my life, really. And that goes into making a lifestyle. And that's what I was going to say is, instead of resolutions, we were talking about, like, what do we actually want in 2019? And it's not like, you know, let's lose 30 pounds or let's do this. It's it's my, I have some work, uh, I have some business goals and things like that. Like, I'm going to help 100 clients this year become healthier. Um, and then I have, like, these little stupid things. <laughs> It's like, it's just to make me feel better about myself. Like I realized that there was, um, you know, in 2018, I got so sort of blinders on that I was, I was too stressed and I wasn't able to relax and I wasn't enjoying my life. I was just trying to plug along. And, um, so it was like little things. Like I stopped wearing high heels because I went into like comfort mode and I love my high heels and I love, I used to be known for like super cool, pretty high heels. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do that again. <laughs> Fine, really cool high heels again. Um, so I mean, just dumb stuff like that. But um, the last thing I want to talk about, I want to grab that. The last thing I want to talk about, because the title of my free Facebook group, which by the way you should join, a link is going to be above this, it's called "Stop Dieting and Live Your Life." And the title of this video is "Stop Making Resolutions and Live Your Life." Good job, Patrick. Vanna White here. So life actually stands for something. So it's living intentionally, having fun with abundant energy. So let's show Patrick's face again. So when I say that I help people live their lives, when I the, we're talking about this acronym here, so living, it's there's more to living, there's more to life than just waking up. You want to be able to achieve your goals. You want to have motivation. You want to have mood stability. You want to have, um, you want to feel healthy, and you want to be able to achieve your goals in life. And so you can't really do that when you're not healthy. And so that's why I help people live their lives by becoming more healthy. And, and intention, intentionally, living intentionally. Because we were just talking about, you can't just like wake up one day and be like, oh, I'm going to do this. It takes intention. It takes choice. It takes commitment. It takes consistency. So, you know, I, in my six-week program that I'm talk, going to talk about in a second, I'm launching it in February. Really, really excited about it. January, you're totally going to be spammed with information about it because it's super cool and people saw so many results from it and I just had so much fun. But um, we talk about in that group, you know, it's a choice and like you have to, it's a lifestyle and when it's a lifestyle, you, you need the support, you need the information, but it has to be intentional. You have to make a choice. Um, but fun, I wanted to throw that one in there partially because it fit the acronym and partially because um, we talk a lot about stressing less. And I just mentioned that with 2018, right? I had way too much stress in my life. And stress is like the number one killer because it starts this cascade in your body that turns eventually into some sort of symptom. I have to look like I'm smacking the face. It turns into some sort Meryl, of symptom. Uh, strife. Meryl, sorry. Um, fatigue, you know, digestive issues, all these different things, inflammation, which is like the underlying cause of all these chronic diseases. And so you have to, when you're doing these things, like for example, let's take a workout because we've been talking about that a lot because people do that when they do resolutions and goals in the new year. Choose one that's fun. There's no reason that you should be like, I'm going to do a Tabata workout. I hate Tabata, but I'm going to stick to it for eight weeks. No, there's like a million different workouts. There's yoga, there's CrossFit, don't do CrossFit. There's <laughs> there's 21 Day Fix, there's um, going to the gym uh, and, and taking so boxing classes. there's so many things on like YouTube. There's you YouTube do like, you know, like seven day stuff on YouTube. It's amazing. Oh, 10 like, minute workouts, no 20 excuse. minute workouts, 30 yeah. minute workouts. Yep. What, you know, high intensity, low intensity, jumping on the trampoline, you know, figure out what you, he likes running. I hate running, but it's like meditation for him. He loves it. 
So figure out like what's fun for you. Stressing less, this is what I tell all my clients in their results session when I talk about the stress piece. Stressing less is not all about like getting zen and meditating, although we do talk about that and it's important. But it's also about bringing fun into your life, bringing activities that make you joyful, doing things that make you laugh, watching funny movies, hanging yeah. out with friends. Absolutely. And that is something that's way important for your health. And the last thing, when I talk about helping people live their life, stop dieting and live your life, stop making resolutions and live your life, is and you find your nutrition so that you can live your life, is energy. Energy is one of the first things that people see go when they're super stressed, when they're starting to see symptoms, when their body is breaking down, when it's not functioning properly. Energy was absolutely the first thing because that's what, when I met, met Patrick, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm tired all the time. That's what started this journey for me, ultimately. And then... Um, People think so often, you know, being tired is just part of like, well, it's part of aging, or I'm just really busy, or I'm really stressed out, and all those things might be true, but you should be able to get a solid good night's sleep and wake up with energy and be able to get through your day without needing a nap in the afternoon. And there's so many people that don't feel that way and feel exhausted chronically. And so when I help, what? So Keegan said something today. He started a workout program. It's pretty cool because he understood the connection. So he had a sleepover last night, but it was over, and they stayed up to like 11.30, got up early and all that stuff. And he was really tired, and I said, well, why don't you take a nap? He goes, no, I'm going to work out because I know it'll actually give me more energy. Oh, yeah. So here's a 14-year-old that's actually, you know, about a week into his workout program. He understands that relationship. Now, just think if you were able to turn seven days into a lifetime, and yeah, getting up early is hard, and but you sleep great at night, and the workout and the food and all that stuff just it all piles energy. on top of each other. And like we said earlier, when you make when you stop making excuses and you start making choices, then it becomes a lifestyle where you know maybe you don't do it one day, but that's okay. Just because you didn't do it that day doesn't mean you fall off the wagon and binge on three things of Oreos and don't do a workout for the whole week. It means okay, I didn't do it that day, but I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going right. to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to do it again. Yep. And when it becomes more and more of a lifestyle, then you're like, okay, then you learn. Well, I you I am really busy. I need to take three days off this week, but my nutrition is going to be on point because I know that makes me feel better, and I'll be able to jump right back into the workouts because my body has the nutrients that it needs. I have the energy that I need. I'm still getting sleep. I know what to prioritize, what I can be loosey goosey on, and what I need to really um, choose to feel good. Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So life. That's new. And stop fighting to live your life, living intentionally, having fun with abundant energy. I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great uh, acronym. Yeah. So um, really quickly, um, just a reminder, join my free Facebook group where you can stop dieting and live your life. And that's the name of it. So I'll post a link above or below or something. And then um, I wanted to just very, very quickly, and then we're going to get off, talk about my six-week program. It's called, guess what it's called? Stop dieting and live your life. <laughs> Discover your nutrition. I almost guessed. You almost did. Did you know that actually? You knew that. You knew that. So it's six weeks. I'm going to launch it in February. I'm just giving you like a little surprise announcement here. But um, I'm really excited about it. It is, um, we talk, it's an elimination diet so that you are able to pull out commonly inflammatory and aggravating and allergy type foods. And then I teach you how to bring them in so that at the end you discover your nutrition, what foods work for your body and what foods don't. And you'll figure out exactly how to add them in carefully, how you can experiment and find the balance in your life. We talk a lot about it being a lifestyle. And during the period of time that you're doing this, there's two modules that you receive every single week that are educational. So there's different topics. There's autoimmunity, there's gut health, there's... Um, uh, what else did we talk about? So many different things, hormones. Um, so there's a lot of different modules and just, just education. So you really, by the end of the six weeks, a lot of the comments is like, I learned more about my body. I know how to eat now. I know how to grocery shop now. Um, I lost weight. I feel better. My digestion is better. I don't have stomach pains anymore, you know, whatever it is. And so I got a lot of good feedback on the program because I did a practice run at the end of this year. And so I'm really excited to launch that. But in the meantime, if you want more updates on that, like I said, you're going to see that a lot in January. Every time I do this, because the video, like, where it is, it looks like I'm going to hit you, but it's not. It's like six inches in front of his face, I promise. <laughs> That's actually, like, a really good, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're having way too much fun. So, uh, but fun. It's uh, how you're living your life. So, um, all right. So, that's it, hey, guys. Wait, can, can I make a plug? Oh, yeah. So, her her program is, is really good, and I've seen it um, impact a lot of people. And it's interesting, when it comes to fitness and nutrition, 
for those of you who are sports fans, and especially with the football games being played today, for whatever reason, when you get into your own life with eating and fitness, a lot of times we don't feel like we need a coach. And so just imagine how the Alabama Crimson Tide would do if Nick Saban was not their coach. They just wouldn't do as well. Now he's unique because he's, he's, he's an unbelievable coach. Um, but it's just... You're saying I'm not an unbelievable coach? No, she's a, that's my point. <laughs> I'm is, kidding. Is a lot of us need help and, and we have these, these misconceptions of what's going on in our life. We go, well, I just have... My belly always gargles. Well, why does your belly always gargle? Why do oh, yeah. you know why you know why do you have Someone diarrhea said, every night or whatever? Was, There's and, and these are the types of things that that, that she'll help you with. Okay, we leads, talk about poop. That's one of the monikers. Yeah, I know that, that that just leads to better health. I generally always viewed myself as very healthy, and when Kylene started down this road, you know, I was lucky enough to be the guinea pig in a lot of ways, and um, she healed a lot of things that I didn't think were wrong. Yeah. So for those of you who know, who maybe aren't feeling as good, you I've seen her, her really help a lot of people. So, um, you yeah. know, at least check it out was, is what I would tell you. You have yeah. nothing to lose. Um, and and who, who knows, you may end up feeling better and living a better life. Yeah, one of the, thank you. Cool. One of the girls that graduated my beta program, um, I think one of the best comments I received was, I worked, I think it was like 10 or 15 years in like a, holistic, natural doctor's office and didn't learn as much about my body and how to feel good as I did in your six-week program. And I never saw the results that I did in your six-week program. And she said one of the biggest changes was with her ulcerative colitis. And that change was that her ulcerative colitis symptoms were non-existent. I mean, that's huge for six weeks. That's, that's amazing. That's mind-blowing. That's a disease. That if you go to the doctor in the medical community, they say you're going to struggle with this your entire life. I'm going to put you on a medication and you're probably still going to have some flare-ups and some symptoms. And you may have flare-ups, but it is a disease that is controllable in, in a high, high percentage of cases if you know what to do and you know how to change your lifestyle and change your food. And so we talk about all of that in the six-week program and that, I think, was my favorite testimony. I worked in like a holistic nutrition doctor's office, whatever it was for like 15 years, never saw these results, so. Pretty cool. All right, hey, bud. So let us know if you have any questions. I'd love to hear not what your resolutions are, but what your goals are and what you're going to do to achieve them. And don't forget to join my free Facebook group, Stop Dieting and Live Your Life. Bye. Bye, everybody.